Snapchat buys an emoji startup, Netflix is capping videos on Verizon and AT&T, and more. It's Friday, March 25th, and this is Crunch Report, presented by Toyota. Snapchat has reportedly bought Bitstrips, the maker of the popular Bitmoji app, for $100 million. With Bitmoji, people can create an avatar that looks like them, choosing from an array of options like face shape, hair color and cut, eye shape and color, and so on. TechCrunch's Jordan Crook sees the acquisition as a way for Snapchat to integrate Bitmoji into its main platform, envisioning Snapchat's geofilters becoming more personalized and tailored to each user. Snapchat could also use the Bitstrips team to integrate Snapchat into the phone's main keyboard. Bitstrips has raised a total of $11 million to date. Upon news of the acquisition, Snapchat jumped to the number one spot in the U.S. Apple App Store for the very first time. Neither company has yet to confirm the deal. Speaking of startup deals, countertop smart oven startup June closed a $22.5 million Series A round led by hardware and software investor Eclipse, with participation from Foundry Group, First Round Capital, and Lara Hippo Ventures. June is basically an easy-bake oven infused with a bunch of technology for adults, and one with a grown-up price tag of $1,500. June features a built-in camera and processor to identify the foods you put inside to cook them at the recommended settings. It also connects to a live streaming app so you can monitor the cooking process. June intended to start sending its first batch of products this spring, but has delayed shipping until this year's holiday season. So, it turns out that Netflix has been quietly capping videos on Verizon and AT&T devices so that you don't burn through your data cap in a mere few hours. Netflix streams videos at a resolution of 360 pixels with a bit rate of 600 kilobytes per second on AT&T and Verizon. Those specs, in English, translate to basically garbage. Netflix has been doing this for the last five years on AT&T and Verizon, but it doesn't do this for videos on T-Mobile and Sprint. That's because those two carriers are more permissive around going over your data cap. Netflix explained its rationale on its blog, saying, We believe restrictive data caps are bad for consumers and the internet in general, creating a dilemma for those who increasingly rely on their mobile devices for entertainment, work, and more. So in an effort to protect our members from overage charges when they exceed mobile data caps, our default bit rate for viewing over mobile networks has been capped globally at 600 kilobits per second. It's about striking a balance that ensures a good streaming experience while avoiding unplanned fines from mobile providers. This, of course, makes AT&T and Verizon look really bad. Full disclosure, Verizon owns AOL, which owns TechCrunch. On the topic of original TV content, Apple is working on its first original TV show. It's going to be an unscripted TV series about apps and app developers. We don't really know much other than that, but hopefully it will be less like Bravo's startup Silicon Valley reality TV show and more like HBO's Silicon Valley, well, at least in terms of entertainment value. We also don't know when this show will happen, nor how people will be able to watch it. That said, Apple's EdiQ did tell the New York Post that the company will be distributing the show across all of its devices. This news comes after previous reports about Apple potentially launching a show starring Dr. Dre. Last but not least, if your company is in the market for a gigantic 84-inch 4K touchscreen computer and has $22,000 on hand, Today is a good day. After numerous delays, Microsoft has started shipping its Surface Hub to business customers. The Hub comes in two sizes, the enormous 84-inch 4K edition and the 55-inch HD edition for about $9,000. Microsoft is marketing the Surface Hub as a tool for collaboration, both in person and through video conferences. That's the report for today. I'm Megan Rose Dickey. Crunch Report airs every weekday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on TechCrunch.com. You can also find us on iTunes and on YouTube. See you on Monday.